In the short time since we started this show, we have interviewed many major figures in some of the most consequential and important political parties and movements in South Africa. And yet, in DM, after comment, after YouTube, after TikTok, after Instagram, after Twitter, people have been asking us the same thing. They've been saying, Dan, the issue Talk to the fighters, talk to the Red Berets. We want an interview between you and a representative of the Economic Freedom Fighters. And we've been trying, we want to talk to everybody. There've been DMs and messages and phone calls. And finally, just recently, the Economic Freedom Fighters reached out to us, which is why this is our exclusive interview with Naledi Chirwa. She came to prominence as a significant force at Tux University during the Fees Must Fall protests. Then she joined the EFF. Then she became one of the youngest members of parliament in South Africa's history. She was in her 20s. And now she's heading up communications for the Economic Freedom Fighters' campaign to win in Gauteng in 2024. So I sat down with Naledi for a thorough conversation about everything that the EFF is currently doing in South Africa and what they plan to do should they win power. We spoke about land and what the EFF means by wanting to become custodians of the land and ending private ownership. We spoke about how they plan to create millions and millions of jobs. We spoke about why they continually end up in partnerships with the ANC at a local government level. And we spoke about their funding model and whether or not big businesses are pro or anti the EFF and where all the money is coming from. This is the issue with Naledi Chirwa and the EFF. And this is the issue with Dan Corder. South Africa really is a movie. Welcome, this is The Watch Party. If you're brand new here, you should know a few things. Firstly, all of our episodes are also carried on podcasts in longer and more thorough analyses. Secondly, that we got a Patreon where we put up exclusive expert interviews once a week for our subscribers on some of the biggest issues facing South Africa. And you can become one of those subscribers and enjoy those weekly interviews for less than 100 Rand a month. Just search Patreon, The Issue with Dan Corder. Lastly, if you're brand new, it would be super helpful to us if you click subscribe on the channel and like the video costs you nothing and means the world as we develop the show right here's the issue with the EFF and Naledi Chirwa mm. you are on the issue which means that I will be offering you beanies you're Yay. under no obligation to wear them but there are many you can pick your color Let you can see. pick your tone Let me this see. is the load shedding one anti escon oh shout out you can turn on the light I think I want that one is it let me give yeah. you all your options so there's purple there's also one which just says vote in large letters yeah that's yellow that's too yellow and then for my liking greens do you want okay. the load shedding one the purple one I want the load shedding okay. one there we go. Because we're you. running with that tag this year. Oh, yeah? yeah. What are you running with? It's our land and jobs now mm. stop load shedding. That's good. So this is spot on an ode to the EFF for 2024. Okay, <laughs> good. Well, you can turn on the lights if you want, maybe later. Yeah, let me do it now. Is it on? One more time. Well done. Yes. Shine yes. Right like a diamond, <laughs> like Rihanna said. <laughs> so let's talk about uh, the first word in yeah. the EFF's campaign, yeah. uh, which is land. Yes. So when you say that the EFF wants to take the socialist position of becoming a custodian of yeah, all yeah. of South Africa's land, what do you mean by that? We mean, okay, I'll try to simplify this as much as possible. Yeah, I'm very simple today. Yeah. I have no capacity. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so what it means is that, mm. right, that the state becomes like the guardian of the land. Yes. You get what I'm saying? I mean, the state is currently the guardian of the land. It is not. The state's there's rules private, and laws cover the, the whole course we're of We're South talking Africa's about land, land the, mm. the place where we walk on. Yeah our seas and everything and all of that, right? That is, there's a high percent, I think around 74% is owned by the white minority and the state owns 7% of land. But they are guardians. They have legal sovereignty over which they rule. So when the state is the custodian of the land, right, there is no private ownership of the land that is indefinite. Right. You get what I'm saying? I hear you. So if Dan comes, a young Dan from from Eldos mm. with dreams to get into agriculture right. comes to the state and says, listen here, this is my idea. I get you. I want to get into farming. I want to be a farmer, right? Then the state says, okay, then from Eldos. I get you. Here is the land. Can farm up the land. Good language switch there for Eldos. <laughs> <laughs> right? And then you go and you farm. Mm. But it doesn't mean now now the generation after generation sure. is going to be owning that land. Then you come back after 10 years, you're like, this is what's going on on the land that you gave me. 
It's very successful. This is how I'm contributing to the economy. This is how it's benefiting the people. And then we say, and you say, I want to continue. Mm. Then we go ahead, farm on the land, right? But there is no private ownership. Right. That stay, Guti, your land is now yours forever and ever. I mean, and you keep transferring it to your children. Mm. Now, if my children and your children, then if they get married and you've got big land, I've got big land, it keeps growing, it keeps mm. growing, keeps growing. And then you find that years down the line, there's one particular family that owns more land than everybody else. Right. Okay. And then they're not even using it. I hear you. And now we want residences for our people. We want to bury our people. We can't even bury our people mm. then. Our people have to be buried on top of each other mm. in cemeteries. They have to be buried sitting down. Yeah. How do you rest in peace when you are sitting like this? Yeah. Yeah, your bones, right. your skeletons are sitting like this in the in the tomb. You're right. There, there's no dignity in the current setup For of sure. land ownership. And the state must be capacitated enough to be guardian and custodianship. So that's what we mean I hear you. when we speak about custodianship of the land. It protects everybody. Mm. It protects state sovereignty as well because you can't build up on land ownership right. and you can't target poor people because that's what happens, right? Mm. The government gives poor people RTPs and all of those things and the rich who want to make business in those particular townships come in or even if they don't come in themselves but poverty, you know, um, forces you mm. to sell assets that you should be keeping for that's a very true. long time. That's true. And then now you move from the RTP house, you go stay in a shack. Because of poverty, the indignity of it all. Completely. You get what I'm saying? I do. And there should be a protection t on that particular basis that people cannot be exploited in that particular way. And if they need particular opportunities that are accessible through land ownership and leases, mm. then they are able to access that because the state owns the land. They don't sure. have to go beg van der Merve. They don't have to go beg whoever. They don't have to just be the manual work, the right. manual labor on the farms of the, of the of the farmers. They can themselves be the farmers and, and themselves. And then we also grow the agricultural base with that particular perspective. Sure. And then the industry isn't just monopolized or duopolized to a certain group of people or a certain group of um elites on the side who have access to pick and pay and shop rights and all of those things. We want to make the playing field more equal. We want to make it to benefit more people than it currently does. Because inequality is another thing that is going to be addressed by expropriation of land without compensation. Okay. There's a reason why they are fighting for this land. Mm. There's a reason why they're not giving it over so freely. Yeah. Because they benefit from it. Mm. That includes big business. Yes. They benefit and we want that benefit to be spread across the board. What, we, what tired of poverty? Mm. What tired of the humiliation of being stripped of land yeah. through colonization and still being stripped of land even supposedly after colonization. Totally. So how how did we address colonization? Mm. How did we address the laws of land of land um um the land laws of 1913 mm. under the apartheid government if they are not being reversed totally. through the law? Totally. So will there be exceptions? To certain kinds of land? Because, I mean, I'm just thinking maybe big business would be nervous of the EFF because they'd lose their land ownership. And they from don't their lose. Incentive, you, they don't lose. Okay, so are you saying so that big business They businesses, don't lose hmm. their land. Mm -hmm. The state becomes custodian okay. of all land. Sure. And then the businesses must apply to use the land. They are already there. Okay. So there will probably an audit. There will be an audit process right. to see how everything is going. And then obviously, because we, we, we don't, we're not, we're a very scientific party. By the way, yeah, we're very we're, we're, we do things by the book. Mm. We consult with the experts. We've got experts within our ranks. We've got yes. PhD holders within our ranks. Yeah, you guys right? are one of the we're most very educated, qualified. Parties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's, that's true. It, like you never feel enough in the. <laughs> <laughs> you graduate today and you're like, yo, I must register tomorrow. Yeah, what if you're not a doctor yet? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. So everything is going to be done mm. diligently and efficiently. That's how an EFF government operates, okay. and we. See see it already really? in the in the places where we are MMCs. We okay. see it with our MMCs of, of health who are opening mobile clinics in places that were dejected. We are seeing it with our MMCs of water and sanitation and so on and so forth, mm. right? There should be a process that is able to audit the land of South Africa in completion. Right. Who would stand to lose their land under an EFF, admi EFF administration? Why would they lose their land? Okay, fine. Who... Let's say EFF now just mm. is is the custodian. Nobody nobody technically owns land anymore. They're just using it on permission of the government, yes. right? Which people or mm. what kinds of people or businesses or homesteaders or farmers now mm. would probably be told by the government an EFF government yeah. we want to use the land you're on for something. When they else. are working the land. I'm just 
Ah, even I'm sure even you so like are, when you apply. Are you including h- historical claims from even, injustice? The or state just, okay. will be custodian of all land. Okay. You then. Yeah. When you see in the in the famous words of, of the commander in chief, yeah. if you see a piece of land that you like, uh-huh. because the state will be custodian, you can come through. Right. So it's empty land. Come through. It's empty land. Not just empty land. There's different kinds of land. There's agricultural land. Mm. There's land that you can't use to do anything on. There's different kinds of land that can be used for different purposes. Okay. There's people who own too much vast land. And they'll have lose some of it. And they will have to share it with the because they okay. have to you own it with the people. Totally. But it's only commercial enterprises. Or is it Pardon? also like is it the only commercial? The state will be custodian of all land. Totally. There will be no punishment system that happens okay. where we punish people because you are on productive land and using productive land. So if someone's that living in not, a house in a is, suburb... No, okay. why uh, Why would we go to bother people of Sentin okay. when, we, when we are building our own special economic right. zones? Okay. We're going to build more Sentin. Okay. So the hub of Africa, the economics of Africa, the economy hub sure. of Africa will not just remain sentient forever okay. in eternity. Okay. Well, we want to build special economic zones to magnify and to increase economic opportunities. Okay. Sure. But I need you to understand the part of the fact no, that I don't understand. the state Custodian. owns the land. Nobody owns it. They just use it. They you Exactly. But, and then they have to reapply every now exactly. and again. Exactly. We give leases. Okay. We do consistent audits. It's a lot audits. of power in the state to, con- to decide who has it's what It's necessary land. power. Okay. I'd rather the power be in the state right. than to be in the hands of the Oppenheimers. Well, I mean, that's not necessarily the choice. I'm saying to you, me, okay. I would rather, okay. as a young black South African, okay. I'm saying I put my trust mm. in the state more than I would in the private sector because I've seen how the private sector encounters people like me. Right. We approach it each and every day mm. with worker issues. We approach it each and every day with health issues. We approach it each and every day with the positionality mm. of women in this country. Sure. Because there's a hierarchy system that capitalism creates mm. that's based on racism and patriarchy. And the people who suffer the wrath of that particular system is people who look like me absolutely yeah so, so i would rather i would rather a socialist state mm. be custodian of the land and it's of course than, than dan and his friends <gasps> yes i don't want to be the custodian of the land <laughs> and, and under an mf government i me and you will be the same it's nice ne? uh so it's the end of the ingonyama trust also yeah no pardon it would be the end of the ingonyama but trust. the eff has said on so many occasions uh-huh. right the state is the custodian totally the, it, it, we're not ending any organization. Okay. So the Ingonyama Trust not, could apply to keep not, it the same. We're not stopping anyone from existing. We're not cutting. We're not closing doors for anyone. Right. Okay. The state is just the custodian of the land. Okay. I hear you. Got it. Ne? I got it. Yeah. We're not, we're not shutting down anyone. We're not seizing existence of different people in different sure. groups. In fact, the EFF is working very closely to traditional officers and chiefs in the country. I don't know if you've noticed mm. that. We mm. have very close relations because we are, we acknowledge and we respect culture. Got it. We acknowledge and respect the leadership component mm. of traditional leaders. It's very important in maintaining the moral fiber of our society. Mm. They are very important in the discourse of the day because we can't neglect our own and maintain the Dutch Roman law sure. upon to oversee the issues of the country, to oversee the moral fiber of the country while we denigrate our own. Sure. They exist for a reason the people know why they respect and they know why they are able to respond on command to their chiefs and to, to their traditional leaders and even as the EFF we also subscribe and we are working with them through respect and acknowledgement through humility as well okay. because we acknowledge their role in society sure. we acknowledge their role in our communities I think Julius yeah. Malema in your guys' national manifesto launched yes. Moses Mabida a few weeks ago said that he could create or the EFF would create something like 9 million jobs yeah. instantly and yeah. then I went and read the manifesto yes. and there's lots of things there's yes. like uh, nationalizing mines there's creating enormous infrastructural projects yes. hiring lots and lots of people yes. doubling the social grants for South yes. Africans yes I must admit, it sounded very expensive. Uh-huh, of like course. Very. I mean, that's why we also have the, the part on talking about the fiscal policy of how we're going to fund these things. So explain that. How would right. the EFF, so would for they example, to rule? part of what we 
apply in the fiscal policy of how we're going to fundraise money or how we're going to make money to be able to support our programs is the issue of getting rid of illicit financial flows. Okay. And the tax erosion base. Okay. Right? So those are part of the things because we've seen over the years of how much money gets out of the country that isn't accounted for, Mm -hmm. how much money gets lost in corporate tax Okay. That isn't accounted for. And we have to deal with those particular things to fund our particular programs that we yes. present as well. Do you so there's also different see other there's different and various other ways that we propose in the fiscal policy. Right. And I'm happy you're saying you read the manifesto as well. Because then you start getting a picture yeah. of how the EFF is looking to build this country. And even investors mm. are able to have a picture of how this is also going to benefit them. Yes. You know, when we talk about the issue of employment and creating jobs, when we're talking about special economic zones. So even you as an investor, you start seeing yourself from the perspective of the EFF and not what you've been hearing on Twitter, but you actually start seeing the tangible plan of yes. making things happen, both as a person who's sitting at home who's unemployed and also as an investor who seeks to invest in the country. So a lot of the policy proposals within the EFS manifesto says that South Africans should be in control of our food production. We should be providing something like 100% of the food to all feeding schemes and yeah, schools. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. should like 80 to 100% of the food in our supermarkets should be coming from Absolutely. South Africa. Absolutely. The problem, as some people identified, is yeah. that there are international flows of food production that yeah. make food cheap. And there are certain foods that can't be made yeah. or grown at cost effective price in South Africa. Yeah. That sounds like food would just get more expensive under the year. I mean, it's also with... No, no, no. It's not necessarily what what, what that means. What mm-hmm. it means is that we've made the laws simpler for imports to happen. Okay. Right? And what we need to do is to subsidize and invest in local issues, in local products. Localization has to take place even in different industries. An okay. example I'll give is the issue of poultry. Mm. Right? So we've got poultry farmers. They are there in their numbers. Black women especially are even entering that industry quite a lot. Right? But the system makes it easier for the outside world to come in and sell their products than it does for the inside. Sure. And now to level, to make the, the, the playing field equal. Mm. You need to bring in your own people as well because where are we going to sell our chickens if you don't sell them to each other? I totally agree with you. And so obviously when the demand is coming in from imports mm. and it's in ma- it's, an, it's in a magnitude um, um, number, then it becomes cheaper. It's, mm. it's logic. Like if I'm going to buy in bulk a thousand t-shirts, mm. you're going to probably give me a 10% discount. Sure. I'm just saying like the application of that logic in the practical sense, mm. right? As opposed to buying one t-shirt or three t-shirts, then the price becomes higher. Yes. It's supply and demand. It's that concept. And we are putting that into practice, but also to benefit us internally, locally, domestically as well. So you won't be banning imports. You'll just be funding No, we can't because we've, we've got relations with other countries as well. And we want to build relations. I mean, we're talking about intra-trade in the African, in the mm. African continent as well. That's part of what we propose on international um, internationalism, right? Sure. We want to propose easier trade um, rules and regulations in the in in the African continent to boost our economy as a continent because we've also highlighted and seen how traumatic it is for a country to just be succeeding alone sure. or to be sustainable alone or to be sufficient, just sufficient alone because everybody then wants to flock there no, because right. there's no opportunities. And it's not even an issue of countries. Even us in South Africa, in our own country as well, people in the Eastern Cape move to Gauteng because there aren't enough economic opportunities in the Eastern Cape. Mm. So we all go to these cosmopolitan areas. It's regardless of where in the continent you are, you want to go to where there's more choice there's more um, opportunities to be economically active especially Mm -hmm. young people you won't sit and suffer in poverty and we want that sort of opportunity for the entire continent Mm, i understand Mm. so so much of what the anc has done in the last 30 years has been trying to build rdp houses roll out water and sanitation electricity and you know create job uh kind of like creativity climate in south africa yeah Uh, and one problem that we've seen i guess in governments all around the world no matter whether you're a democracy or you know uh, I mean, alleged first world or third world yeah. is that inefficiencies happen within government. I know they also happen within private. Sure. But, you know, South Africa is one of the most endemically corrupt places in the world. I yes. imagine the EFF would yes. say something like, well, we have enough money to do everything we want if yeah. we just stop corruption. Yeah. But if what you're proposing is let's basically put the whole country on the government payroll in one way or another, yeah. how are you going to stop and root out corruption and inefficiencies? It comes with transparency. It's one of our cardinal pillars as well. 
open and transparency. Every, mm. every process must be opened up to the public to be able to peruse I and see. to be able to be involved. So civil society, that's why we want young people to be involved in processes of politics. Mm. So they are in the know of what is going on because that extends even beyond just knowing a political party's manifesto. It goes in into being active even in the most immediate. Like for instance, there's the... There's the issue of the 18 children who died at Umtambega in Timbisa mm. in a classroom, mm. right? So now there's the going to be collapsed, yes, yes. Now there's going to be a tendering process. I see. And we're saying the SGP is not in the know what's going on. The school parents are not in the know. The children's parents are not in the know what's going on. So transparency becomes a very pivotal point of sustaining the issue of rooting out corruption. I understand. And second to that, even rooting out, outsourcing is part and parcel of that gift because now with outsourcing I'm um, with 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 outsourcing, right? With tenderpreneurship, mm. people utilize those opportunities to maximize their own pockets. And then the people who suffer on the ground are our workers, right? So you so get the EFF do it you get you in sourcing. Okay. In sourcing and creating state owned companies. Yeah, so I instead saw of in the instead of ten, instead of tendering out mm. a tender to build a road, the, right. the state already owns an infrastructural company okay. that is capacitated. The state already owns a concrete company. The state already owns a housing company. These okay. are th developments, especially infrastructural development, is always going to be ongoing because we need to fix schools, we need to fix clinics, we need to fix hospitals. So, would the private sector not be able to bid on nor participate in any government business? The priority is to strengthen state capacity, sure. to build state capacity. But that is the primary thing because that benefits the people. Absolutely, but yeah. will the private sector... It will because there's okay. the private sector who requires the private sector services. Okay. There's private schools who need the private sector to build their own schools. Okay. There's I private hospitals you. as well who need the private sector to build their own schools. So if... But when it pertains to the state, yes. the state must be able to carry its own responsibility without relying on the private sector because what that builds or what that creates is a private sector that bullies the state. Okay. And the private sector is able to compromise the people because the people rely on the private sector and not the state. Do you think they're the doing state. that now? Yes, that is the case. And another dangerous thing that's happening currently is that we're moving into an era of privatizing everything, right? Of giving the private sector much more power than it should have. We saw with the privatization of SAA and the likes, and we are seeing even with the intentional, you know, um, Mangling. Yes. I don't know. Is that the correct English word? I don't know what you're about to say. Meddling. Meddling with? Yes. With private, with, with public entities. Okay. Like or Transnet, yes. right? Where the entity is literally being thrown to the ground and being compromised so that it can be privatized. But that's not necessarily, oh, wait, hold on. So yes. you're saying that the government is willfully ruining it so they yes. can sell it. Okay. Yes. Essentially, what you as the EFF are saying is that the state needs to take even more responsibility for the welfare of its people than it currently does. Absolutely. Double the so social grants, employ many people, fund many people's businesses and the rest. But unfortunately, what we've seen in South Africa yeah. is when the admittedly ANC government yeah. is given trust over the organs of state. Yeah. They loot and they corrupt and they destroy it. Why should South Africans trust the EFF with even more power yeah. over their lives than the ANC has been trusted when that has gone so yes. wrong? Yes. And that's an important question, right? Um, particularly because that is what we're trying to demonstrate and are demonstrating currently. If you look at the work of our MMCs, they're even stealing some of our ideas because of how good they are and how good they are implemented. Like with the VUMACAM agreement and arrangement in Johannesburg under Okomisar Dr. Mkini Chwaku, who's the MMC of safety, right, in crime prevention. And they are seeing that that particular thing is working, not only just to root out crime and to prevent crime, but to be able to follow up on cases of crime because the city is lit up and is camera vised. Mm. Right, I guess it's camera vice, <laughs> right? And over and above that, just yesterday, our MMC of water and sanitation in Okuruleni just launched AMA backup generators for the water reservoirs sure. in Zagani, in Primrose, and Sunward Park, if I'm not mistaken, mm. right? Which means that during load shedding, when our people, you know, load shedding also affects water. Yes, it I does, don't know if yeah. you've picked that up. No, I mean the people fits. of Okuruleni won't have that problem anymore because the EFF exists. Okay, right. So we've displayed ways in which you can put the trust in the EFF. This is how we are able to govern. This is how we want to govern. But over and above that, we can't even compare Mbuiseni Ngozi, Komsa Mbuiseni Ngozi and Panyazali Sufi. The difference is so stark. Okay, let's get to Gauteng in a second. Yes. Because you're saying so many so, things. <laughs> so the, yes, but what I'm actually asking me, yeah. how are we going to trust? That's true. Right? 
You look at the track record of Banyaz Ali Sufi. You look at him from when he was the MEC of basic education. You look at the infrastructural decays that were happening in the public sector. You look at the uh, at the public sector and township schools right now today. Sure. You look at rural schools. You look at informal settlements. And then you ask me, is this what you want to trust? I understand. Over what the EFF has done in just a short period of time. So now we're not looking at feelings. You know, people want to approach politics from the perspective of feelings. We're not talking about relationships here. We're not talking about Mujol. We're talking about the governance of the country. Sure. So the people have the power. It's like you're an employer as the people. Mm. You're an employer. So if you have a puzzle shop then, and I keep stealing tin fish every day, every day I steal tin fish and toilet paper, and will you not get rid of me? But the concern is, yes. because the EFF has gone into local government coalition with the ANC. There's no coalition between the EFF and the ANC. Okay, fine. Partnership. You may call it that, but oh. it's not a coalition because okay. it's not entered to an agreement. I mean, we can choose the words, yeah. but the reason why the EFF and the ANC are governing in a variety of yes. places is because they have a partnership and alliance. I don't really care what the official I'll word tell you is. why. But to use your analogy, yeah, yeah. if... If like somebody is stealing from your shop constantly yeah. and then they can no longer steal anymore because they're not popular enough in this case. But yeah. then they get a friend of theirs to like watch the door so they can continue ransacking cities. That's a problem. Like, So who's like watching the door many, in this analogy? I will explain again. <laughs> but basically, most people vote for the EFF as well as all the other minority and opposition parties yeah. because they're dissatisfied with the ANC. And a lot of the EFF's rhetoric over the years has been kick out the ANC, they're the worst. I disagree with you. You disagree? Our people are not stupid. I didn't say that. No, no, no. I'm not saying, this. I'm not saying that's what you're saying. I'm raising a very important point mm -hmm. here, right? People know, people who vote for the EFF yes. know what the EFF is proposing. Okay, but then They are voting for what we are presenting to be the alternative. They are voting for socialism. They are voting for land. They are voting for jobs. So, so they are not just replacing the ANC. So EFF they are ushering in a new government sure. that is going to serve them. And then we need to sure. respect that particular thing because it's so important. We hear it every day when we go to community meetings. Old women, young people come to us and tell us, guys, we know why we're sending you there. After the latest uh, Kill the Boer uproar, yes. Du, du Bono, yes. uh, a lot of people um, after, a lot of EFF people after that rally uh -huh. said, no, it's not about the Boers or the Afrikaners, it's yeah. about the enemy, the oppressor. Uh -huh. It's for many of us means the ANC. Uh -huh. Why then is the EFF running on a, the ANC's failing ticket and then putting them in power in cities through coalition? It's and not government? the EFF that puts the ANC in Papa is the voters. The voters voted for the ANC. Okay. So that representation represents what the people voted for. But the EFF chose to go into alliance slash coalition. Th that, is, that is what dictates. If the people want the EFF government, they must vote for an EFF government. But once That is why we are even saying right now, we want 50% plus one. Sure. We don't want to co we, don't, we don't want coalitions. But you have a We want to govern the country. Completely understand. But the voting base dictates what must happen. Oh no, but unfortunately, even in partnerships. Yes. Even Which at, meant but that there was that's, another option. That's, that's what I'm trying to That meant more voters didn't want they the had ANC more voters. than did it. They had more voters okay. than the EFF. So we get it. And we can't miss out on an opportunity to mm. show our people how we plan to govern mm. when we are saying to them they must give us their trust. But what they have and seen we have displayed that. They know the ANC already. They know the Democratic Alliance. In Mamilodi, they know what the Democratic Alliance means. In Johannesburg, they know what ANC means. In Okuland, they know what ANC means. Sure. And now they know what the EFF means as well. And that's important because we're going into the national and provincial elections and we don't want to co-govern. Okay. We don't want coalitions. We want the whole country because we've got the plan to put our people out of and, 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 and root out, root out fundamentally poverty. Okay. Yeah. So there's so many things going on. So I just... Azari, not <laughs> we're not the ones that tell people. We, we never send anybody. We've never campaigned for the ANC. We've always oh, been. Oh, I know that. We've always sustained the message, vote for the EFF. Okay. Vote for the EFF. Okay. The electorate is what comes up with the final choice. And that is why even electorate voter education, which the IEC is failing absolutely dismally on. The electorate does vote in that moment. And then yeah. after the votes are closed, the political parties choose how to form in case you fall below 50%. Correct. Or in case no one gets a majority. Yes. So I understand that the Moonshot Pact has basically said that's the DA and uh, mm. everybody have said they don't want to work with the EFF, yeah. which puts you guys in a corner. I totally get that. And it's a beautiful corner, don't you think? 
Because who, <laughs> because who wants to govern with the DA? <laughs> I don't know. Well, no, I'm we are sick. I'm that. from Mamilodi. Mm. I'm from Mamilodi. In Mamilodi there, there's issues of deep, deep, deep internal thuggery that's going on. Water reservoirs are being closed on purpose so people can run their tenders in our communities. That's where we come from. That is that is our reality in Mamilodi. Our potholes. You, if your child gets inside a pothole in in a township, mm. if a child gets, they they can drown if there's water in that pothole. That's our reality. We we live with rubbish. Mm. We live with rubbish. You step out and it smells bad because. Are you referring to the DA's rulership yes, of Tuanekani? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. they have not been good, but the previous administration had exactly the same issues. Yes, but that's not the EFF administration. Okay. But the EFF and now we're bringing in happy an EFF, to work. not happy to work. The voter well, base dictates. Then okay. let me tell you this: okay. we have to govern. At the end of the day, we're being I voted in and we're represented in a council. Okay. We can't say because we're in a council now, the the country must stop. Okay, I the voters have said with the majority is these people, mm. or the second is these people. The electoral base is what decides what happens politically in the country. Okay. And we can't dictate otherwise outside of that. We are right. This is a democratic country. But you and the DA are definitely choosing not to work together. You and Action SA are definitely choosing not to work together. And it's a good thing, don't you think? I Again, still maintain. This is I your position, maintain. not my position. I, I'm not fighting yeah, for anybody. Yeah, no, we're not crying. We're not crying a river <laughs> over John Stenison. The way the EFF has presented itself has caused it to be received by a admittedly uh, white, mm. uh, but like powerful international business and corporate yeah. class as being of concern and a threat to business and corporate and the way things are done and international trade. Mm. So a lot of your guys' policies see it would seem as though if you came to power, that would cause a lot of corporate panic and maybe even divestment from South Africa. Oh, why do you would... say that? Give me. Give oh no, me I mean I'm just that. asking. Give because, me no, I'm but give asking. me more than that because oh, you're because presenting over that. And over you're and... opining on that, right? No, I'm just reflecting the fact that over and over and, and over. And I'm saying I, I require business. a background on that reflection oh, because I, mean... I need to know what is the threat. Okay. Because no. I know. Expropriation of land without compensation mm. is not a threat. Okay. It is not a threat in some socialist countries as well. But the point I is... I know, for example, industrialization mm. is not a threat. And there's some point, there's some form of benefit as well. But then why well. is big business and capital fearful of the EFF if there's no threat? They are not fearful of the EFF. But then why do they keep saying that they are? Who is saying that? On business shows every single week. Which business, business is? Like, every single we can't, week for 10 years. That is important to say, to bring... Evidence, like, because now we're just opining on things that we're catching from the air, but we've never heard the sign of discourse. You've never heard from the businesses itself, business people, from the private sector itself, and business analysts. You've absolutely never absolutely not about it's land always expropriation. Political. It's always political analysts. Okay, it's like with issues pertaining to legal matters, mm. and you've got journalists who are presenting the position of the air or what this particular position in parliament means. It's not the lawyers that are speaking about what is happening in parliament. Okay. Is the political journalists. Okay. Right? So that's why I'm saying it's very important to make a distinct differentiation between when we speak about the business sector. Sure. Are we not speaking about people that are running a propaganda machinery? Listen, because there has been no tangible fear. We've engaged with the business. I think in 2018, the CIC, the commander in chief, was at the RMB or something like that, mm. engaging with the private sector as well. People are willing to listen to the EFF. Investors are willing to listen to the because our plan works. Sure, but let's not get confused. Because also I think remember, that's... Dan, strengthening and building capacity for the state sure. does not mean a threat to the private sector. Necessarily. And if it does sure. mean a, a threat to the private sector, it's a worthy threat. It's a worthy threat because the private sector operates on wanting to maximize profit. So just not in the wellness, not with the prioritizing the wellness of our people. It's like with private hospitals as well. Yeah. They cater for ten percent of the population, right? But they use around the same budget the public sector uses for eighty sure. percent of the population. But just to be clear, you and the EFF have in your view, not seen ev any evidence that the private sector and big business is genuinely fearful of the EFF. It's you think just, it's either political analysts or you think it's... By who? It's fear mongering By the media, by you as well today. By <laughs> me? I'm allowed to ask you the questions. But you said... Because now you're not telling me which businesses are these. Oh, I mean, which I private entities are these. Now, now, now I'm sitting here and I must answer that businesses are scared of the EFF. But I don't know which... Because I've never heard of the businesses that are scared of the EFF. The, we've encountered, we've even com confronted our cliques and different entities, and there is no fear monger. They are not scared of the EFF. They know they are wrong and they correct it. 
We've got the labor desk. We're fighting for workers' issues on a daily basis. There's no business that's scared of the EFF. We agree in principle. That's why they're able to concede to what we're presenting to them. Are they conceding? They do. Okay. They do. So why aren't they funding the EFF? Are you sure? Well, the EFF famously doesn't declare. We who find ourselves. To it. We find ourselves. But then, why aren't they donating to you? They probably donate like ninety-nine thousand rand a year. Yeah, but they're donating tens of millions to other political parties. That's fine. I mean, everybody has that kind of choice in a democratic country. But if they're not to fearful, put their money, if big business, where they want to, because remember, big business. <laughs> sponsors as much as it can because it tries yeah, to pick yeah. as many winners as possible. It tries to what? It, it, it tries to make sure we're not trying wins. to be captured as well then. Also, I, I, I know, also, also I know, understand but that. But let's not switch too quickly, so, right? So now, so now we, so won't, big business. we won't dance and no. be happy that the Oppenheimer is giving us 15 million. They probably won't even have that opportunity to give us 15 million rand But just well. to be clear. Because our party has to belong to the people. Totally. Yeah, and but, it does. But the big business, you say, is so friendly and happy about the idea of the EFF. Mm -hmm. And yet they're not donating to the cause. When big business always donates to parties that they're happy with the prospect of ruling. No, no, no. They, are, they donate Patrice to parties Motsepe, that they can control. Patrice Motsepe, They famously, donate. You see, even that is an opinion that I don't agree with. And I can't answer it on that particular okay. standard. They donate to political parties okay. they can control. Okay. That is how Ramaphosa's presidency comes into being, mm. through the one billion rand donation. And that is why he is serving the private sector. So how does the EFF... That is how he is serving the sure. private sector. But how does the We EFF are not controlled. And it's, import it's, a, it's an important thing. Mm. And to note it in what it really is. Sure. We can't be under the control of capitalists. I understand. It does not make sense for a socialist party. It's called that is that is the true meaning, by the way, of political prostitution. Mm. Political prostitution is not changing your T-shirt from ANC to EFF sure. to DA. The true meaning of political prostitution is selling activism, mm -hmm. is selling political power. So how is the EFF funding its enormous operation? There's different ways. Our public reps, um, you know, feed in into our funds as well. We've got various programs that are running to fundraise. Why doesn't in the, the EFF office. declare? We sell our, declare what? Their, their donations. The, the we law do. says 100,000 and Yes, if they're under, why must we declare something that's under 100,000? Okay, so I'm not suggesting that. Yeah. But in the last handful of years, the EFF has declared once. Because now you're mentioning the law. 3.5 so million. If you really love the law. <laughs> if oh, no, you, I'm just now asking. Because now you're mentioning the law, and mm -hmm. I'm saying the law says what? 100,000. The EFF So now if somebody right. donates 90,000. I agree. And why Malema, must you not protect the same law you're presenting to me? And Malema has su suggested hey. declare uh, donate less than 100,000 so you don't have to declare so that there's no pushback from the ANC. Yes, and, the DA, and that's fine. I totally understand yeah. that. Uh, I just want to ask, yeah. since since currently by public books, we only know that the EFF has received 3.5 million and the yeah. parties that you guys are meaningfully competing with nationally, ANC and the and the DIA, over 120 only million. Only the ANC. Well, okay, fine. Sorry, sorry. Okay. From your view, uh, the, the ANC's got like 137 million rand. Yeah. How are you guys affording all the banners and the merch and the events to compete nationally? I am telling you. It's all my, under it's 100,000. Our people okay. do... Donate to okay. the EFF. I hear you. So when your party is carried by the people, mm. it actually has more impact. Okay. Right? Sure. Because people pay five rent every month sure. for the ringtone of the EFF to ring when you call them on their cell How phones. How many people have done that? I do not know the exact okay. numbers. Okay. I'll probably have to check with the TG. Sure, sure. Right? We donate with SMSs every day. Mm. I do my 10 rent, 20 rent right. SMS thing almost every day with my own airtime. Okay. How must we declare that? No, that's totally but now fine. You, you think about it across the board. The EFF is a very big party. To be clear, I wasn't trying to catch you out. I genuinely no, no, want, no, to anyway. I want to know their funding model. I want to know their funding model. I want to know your guys' funding model. Because yeah, yeah. if you're pulling it off, it's, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. extraordinary. Our people are funding the EFF okay, because cool. they love it so much. And that is so beautiful to see. Mm. To see a movement that is owned by the people sure. and that accounts to the people. Okay. We don't account to an entity, a single entity. We don't account to people who sit around boardrooms and discuss the direction of the country. We account to our people. Okay. And that is why they support each and every gathering that we have. Right. That is why they come out in their numbers to show force to the EFF. I get you. Because they know we account to them.
Thank you so much for watching this exclusive interview with Naledi Chirwa of the Economic Freedom Fighters. Let us know what you thought of our conversation in the comments, her points, my questions. We'd love to hear your feedback. Obviously, go check out our Patreon, as I mentioned at the top of the show, because there's some epic, epic expert interviews, particularly a recent one about unemployment that we're really gassed about that you can go and check out. How expensive it is to be unemployed and seek work in South Africa, which is the reality for so many millions of unfortunate young people. Lastly, if you got this far, I'm guessing that you liked something about the show and we'd love it if you gave us your subscribe. Just click on the subscribe button on the channel and go check out our podcasts. See you in a few days for the next episode of The Issue with Dan Corder.